Now that we've created a pivot table, let's focus on the pivot table builder that pops up on the right side of the screen. This is mainly what you'll use to manipulate the pivot table. At the top of the builder, you'll see the list of the columns you pulled into the pivot. The fields that are currently present in your pivot table will have a check next to the field name in the builder. Since our pivot table is brand new, there aren't any fields in the pivot table, so you can see that none of the fields have a check mark next to the name. Underneath the field list, you'll see four different sections. Filters, columns, rows, and values. When you drag a field into the report filters, instead of showing up in the pivot table itself, it will appear right above the table and will act as a filter on the rest of the pivot table. For example, we have year as one of our fields. If we drag it into the report filters, we'll be able to specify if we want a certain year. As you can see, after I drag the year into the filters, it popped up in the upper left corner of the spreadsheet. And if we click on the dropdown, you can see you have the option to specify certain years that you want to show in the pivot table. The row labels and column labels specify which fields will span down the rows in which will run across the columns. The values specify which field will populate the table. A visual of what each can do will help you to understand. We're going to start with the counts in the values section and first we'll take a look at the filters. So we'll just drag claim count into the values section and now you can see that claim count has appeared in the pivot table. Using the year filter, we can specify any given year. For example, if I select 2013, only claim counts for 2013 will appear in the pivot table. I can also select multiple years by checking select multiple items and adding in an additional year. Now, the claim count that's showing in the pivot table will be for years 2013 and 2014. Now we're going to drag year into the rows. And you can see what this has done to the pivot table is made year the row labels. So claim count is now broken out by year in the pivot table. We can also add more than one field into the rows. Now we'll drag in month. What this has done is the pivot table kept year as the outer row label and then added month within each year. So claim count is now broken out by each month in each year. We could also have put month into the columns. Let's see what this looks like. Now year has remained in the row labels and month is spanning the columns. So now we can see the claim count broken out for each month in each year, just in a different format than what we were looking at before. I'm going to remove month from the columns and show you that you can have more than one field in the value section. If I drag losses into the values after claim count, you can now see that the pivot table contains claim counts and losses, both broken out by year. The more fields you have in your pivot table, the more ways you're going to be able to arrange it. I suggest creating a pivot table of your own and looking at the different ways you can arrange the fields in your pivot table. I also want to touch upon grouping in a pivot table before we move on to formatting in the next lecture. Let's start by taking year out of the pivot table and just have month in the row labels.
Right now, we only have views at the yearly and monthly level, but oftentimes, you'll want to view any given metric quarterly. In order to create a quarterly view, we can group the months. You'll need to highlight the cells you want to group together. In this case, it will be months 1, 2, and 3 to create the first quarter. Once the cells are highlighted, you can right-click on the selection and click Group. Since the field we're grouping is month, you'll see a new field called Month 2 pop up in the pivot table that contains months 1, 2, and 3 grouped together and the remaining months have stayed the same. I'm going to take month out of the row labels to show you what just the new field we created looks like. As you can see, Group 1 contains months 1, 2, and 3, and the rest of the months remain broken out. To rename Group 1, you can simply put the cursor over the cell that contains Group 1 and type Quarter 1. We can repeat this process to create groups for Quarters 2, three, and four. I'll highlight months four, five, and six, right click, go to group, and I'll rename this group quarter two. Again, we'll highlight months seven, eight, and nine, right click, click on group, and then rename this one quarter three. Last, we'll highlight months 10, 11, and 12. Right click, go to group, and rename this last group quarter four. Now, if we drag year back into the rows, You can see that each year contains the quarter field, and so now claim count and losses are broken out by each quarter in each year. But if you close your eyes